Kim Mulkey says that Lauren Cox has the most basketball knowledge of any player that she has ever coached, and she's one of the top two most competitive players she's ever coached. Combine that high basketball IQ, highly competitive nature, athleticism, and tremendous skill like passing, decision-making, shot blocking, and you can see why Cox has had such an incredible collegiate career. So we're going to share some of the plays that really exemplify all of those characteristics, her high basketball IQ, her vision, her decision making, like on this play where she's passing out of a triple team and finding the player who is open. She not only was number 11 in the Big 12 in assists per game, she led all post players in the conference and she led all forwards and post players in the nation in assists per game this year because of all these qualities we're talking about. So we're going to back this up right now so we can really break it down and see how how good she is. As she catches the ball, she's already turning her head to assess the situation. She's looking around to see how many defenders are on her, and then that means who will be open that she can pass it to. So from the down angle, you can see she's already turning her head. She assesses. She has three defenders on her. Somebody is open. And so she's able to turn quickly. Doesn't even have to pivot. She just uses her strength to whip the ball past the defenders. Dee Dee Richards knows where to go to the rim. So Kim Mulkey uses Lauren Cox in this ball screen action at the top of the key at end of quarter and end of shot clock situations for a couple of reasons. To free up the creative abilities of Taya Cooper and spread the court for several options, but primarily to utilize the basketball IQ and the decision-making abilities of Lauren Cox. So Lauren is going to set a back screen or a butt screen, some call it, to force the defense to make a decision on how to defend Cooper coming off the screen. As the first quarter wound down against Texas, Cooper chooses to go left here, and Shug Sutton fights over the top of the screen, but Charlie Collier has to hedge to help on the potential drive. And I think Cooper may have given it up a little bit early here, but she notices Collier is off of Cox, so she dumps it over. And then Cox immediately is in a threat to score. She's in that triple threat position. She's squared up. She could shoot. She could dribble. She could pass. But she recognizes she can't shoot over Collier, who has recovered. The driving lane is not there. Holmes is in the lane. But Sutton's back is to Cooper, So Cox makes the right decision and kicks out for the three-point shot. So Baylor is able to hit a three as the quarter winds down. Cox didn't force a bad shot. She didn't dribble into traffic. She made the right decision, and Baylor hit the three. Texas didn't have any time to score the rest of the quarter. Something else Lauren Cox was known for was tipping out rebounds to set up shots. It was just infuriating for opponents, but genius for Lauren. And as you can see on this play, after the ball is skipped, she really positions herself well. She pins Jada Underwood under the basket. So there's no way that Underwood could get this rebound. And anything that comes off on the other side is going to belong to Lauren Cox one way or the other. And then as the ball comes off the rim, she makes the decision If she thinks she can go up and get the rebound cleanly and not be called for a foul, she'll go up and get it. And if not, she will turn her shoulders in the air and tap it out to a shooter beyond the three-point arc. And that's exactly what she does here. She turns her shoulders and she just smashes the ball like a volleyball hitter would spike the volleyball and gets it out beyond the three-point line. 
So Texas Tech gave Baylor some challenges this year. In the game in Waco, Texas Tech hit 12 three-pointers, but Baylor ended up winning by eight points. Then in Lubbock, it was a back-and-forth game through the first three quarters, but the game was tied 52-52 to heading into the fourth, and that's when Lauren Cox took over. The stats show that Taya Cooper and Juicy Landrum combined for 14 of the 25 points that Baylor scored in the fourth quarter, but when you really break it down, it was Cox's defense and her offensive decision making that made a huge difference. So let's take a look because on the very first possession of the fourth quarter, when Kim Mulkey wants to set the tone, she dials up this play. It's a ball screen for Cox, the 6-4 forward, not her screening. Instead, it's Taya Cooper setting the screen. Her defender, Sydney Goodson, has to jump out to help. Both defenders go with Cox, and she kicks back to the wide-open three-point shooter, Taya Cooper. Let's rewind that back because as Cox drives it, she draws the double team, she makes the right decision, and Baylor hits a three to break the tie and never gives up the lead again. Then on Texas Tech's first possession of the fourth quarter, Baylor really tightens up their defense, and they end up knocking the ball out of bounds with one second on the shot clock. And that's when Lauren Cox uses her smarts and her length to thwart any last-second heroics in this possession. As we take a look more closely at this, watch how Cox is pointing She is directing her teammates. She knows the scout. She knows exactly what's going to happen. She gets her teammates in possession, and then she just knocks the ball out of bounds, and she knows immediately it's a shot clock violation. That's all we needed to do to end that possession for Texas Tech. A few possessions later, Baylor is now up by seven. Texas Tech sets a screen on Cox to try to get Brittany Brewer, their All-American, and their leading scorer, to get her the ball on the block. And with a little help from Dee Dee Richards, who turns out being the National Defensive Player of the Year, Cox fights through to deny Brewer, and then Lexi Gordon on the wing for Texas Tech decides to attack off the dribble. And watch how Cox releases from Brewer, slides into help position, and then uses her length to block the shot. You know, Big 12 coaches talk about how opponents know that Cox is always lurking in the back of the defense, and she shuts down that opportunity for Texas Tech. So Baylor continued to build on their lead, and now at this point they're up by nine, and it's Cox's defense once again that shuts down Texas Tech. In this first part of the possession, there's a lot going on with handoffs and screens for Texas Tech. Baylor plays great team defense, but ultimately it's Cox lurking in the back that helps stop everything. And then Texas Tech has to reset with the ball on the wing. And all game long, Texas Tech had been effective with their dribble penetration and their kick to open players. So Andrea Adams here drives into the paint And Cox steps in just enough to help but not give up that pass to Brewer. And she is able to reach in on the drive and get a hand on the basketball, and she ties it up. Held ball, possession arrow, Baylor. So they end up running this same play three times in a row. It's a different decision for Lauren Cox to make each time. But same result, shot clock winds down and they make the basket at the end of the shot clock every time. So let's rewind this and break it down so you can see the decisions that Cox is making. So each time she comes up to set the screen with the clock winding down right at about the 10 second mark. This first one, she sets the screen, Chrislyn Carr gets caught up a little bit in the screen, so Brittany Brewer has to slide over to help on the drive by Taya Cooper. Cooper attacks Brewer on the dribble and then kicks back to Cox, who has relocated herself away so that she is available for the pass and ready for the shot. She's done this over and over all year long. She recognizes that even though Brittany Brewer is the number two shot blocker in the country and has long arms, she has room to get the shot off. She makes the right decision, pulls the trigger, and makes the shot. 
So next possession, same play. Baylor has an 11-point lead. Again, Lauren Cox comes up right at the 10-second mark on the shot clock. This time, Cooper goes left first, a little crossover. Chrislin Carr goes under the screen and is able to stay with her. So Brittany Brewer doesn't need to help on this play. But Cooper still throws it to Cox to make the decision here. And so Cox catches the ball, and she could drive to the right. The right side of the lane is open, but Queen Egbo steps into the lane, and Lauren Cox is as good as anyone that's ever played at that throwing the high, throwing that high-low pass. The first three years it was to Kalani Brown here. Perfectly placed ball over the outstretched arms of Lexi Gordon right to Queen Egbo, who finishes with two seconds left on the shot clock. So if you go back and you look at that in in real time, you can just appreciate, again, Cox doesn't get rushed. She makes the right decision. She makes the perfect pass. So the game's over at this point, 13-point lead under a minute, but Baylor still uses the same play. And it's just interesting to see the different decisions that Lauren Cox is making throughout the course of the year, and it just showcased all in these three plays. Brittany Brewer helps just a little bit this time, but she's close enough that she recovers, and Lauren Cox just gives a little shot fake. She see, she knows Brewer wants to block it, a little shot fake, Puts the ball on the floor. May have picked up her pivot foot just a little bit early, but they're not going to call that in the WNBA for sure. But she recognizes the situation that Brewer is closer, and she could block that. So she makes the fake, puts the ball on the floor, and with two big steps, drives around and finishes it off with two seconds on the shot clock. I mean, those three plays really just illuminate the decision-making for Cox, whether it was the 16-foot jumper when there was space, the high-low pass when it was available, or the shot fake and drive to the basket. <laughs> 